Good evening and welcome to Contemporary Living tonight. I am Andre Hill. I am one of your hosts and we're going to have a good time tonight. But before we get started tonight, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at Contemporary Living with Farming Hill. You also can follow us on Facebook at Contemporary Living with Farming Hill as well. And if you are, if you live in Chicago, if you live in the south suburbs of Chicago, you can follow our television show, Contemporary Living with Farmer and Hill, each Thursday night, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, on Channel 19. So I'm going to dive right into tonight's lesson. It's going to be a great lesson. Um, a lot of people have been waiting on me to talk about this here. So tonight, we're going to have a conversation. And we're going to talk about starting up a business tonight. All right, so our topic tonight is how to start a business and build your business credit. So, you know, I love the Bible. I always got a scripture available for us. For the Bible tells us in 3 John 2, 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosperous. So, tonight we're going to talk about how to start a business and build your business credit. So first, let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's get into the preparation. So before anybody decide they want to start a business, you first have to prepare yourself for the business. Now, let me let you know it's hard work. It takes time. It takes sacrifice. And you have to have a plan. So first thing you need to ask yourself, have you researched your market? So you need to research your neighborhood, you need to research your community, you need to research your city, and you need to find out are there other businesses in your community that's doing the same thing that you're doing. Number two, you need to ask yourself how you research your competition. You need to know your competition. You need to know who you're competing against, and you need to make sure that y'all are not doing the same thing. And if y'all are doing the same thing, you need to find out a way to do it better than what they're doing. So you want to research your competition. Number three, does it solve a problem or take care of a current need? And that's what you got to ask yourself. Do my business take care of a problem and take care or solve a current need? So your, your, your business has to be different. It, um, I, I always like to use um, the pizza places in our location as an example. For instance, we have Pizza Hut. We have Beggar's Pizza, we have Aurelio's, we have Chicago Dough Pizza, and we had Papa John's at one time that closed down. Now, each pizza place, they provide something different. Now, our community is small, but you wonder how five pizza places are thriving in one community. I can tell you, for instance, if I want something quick, and in the end, if I want something at a reasonable price, guess where I'm going to go? I'm going to go to Domino's. Because Domino's Pizza, they deliver quick, and I know their medium pizzas cost about seven to eight dollars. Now, if I want that Chicago style pizza that just tastes delicious and good, well, guess where I'm gonna go? I'm gonna go right over to Beggar's Pizza. The ambiance is nice. The the their pizza probably is the best pizza in the community, and that's what I'm gonna look at. Okay. Also, you have to ask that if I go to Aurelio's, Aurelio's gonna give me that Italian type pizza. Um, that I that I really like, real, that real Italian flavor. And if I go to Chicago Dough Pizza, I really don't care about their pizza too much, but they offer a buffet, which nobody else offers. So each pizza place, and I hope my example was good, um, provides, even though they all sell pizza, each experience is different. So your business has to give somebody, people are looking for an experience. People are looking for something different. So your business has to be something different that's going to provide an experience like nobody else. There's nothing new over uh, under the sun, but you want to make sure that your business sets itself apart from other businesses. I actually didn't hit on number four, but since we right there, number four says your business has to be deeper than money. I get it. We all need money. We, we want to make money, but your business has to be deeper than just money. You got to have a passion for it. You want, uh, you, you got to um just want to do it you gotta you gotta do something that you love doing other than that you're gonna be miserable you're gonna be upset and guess what your business is not gonna last statistically 90 percent of businesses fail within the first three years that's statistically another stat 90 percent of businesses 90 percent get this now 
Ninety percent of business owners don't even know how don't even know how to operate a business. That is a staggering number. Fifty-one percent of businesses worry about how their business is going to survive from from month to month. And if you're using all your money each and every month to run your business, you are running your business the wrong way. You ever hear about people say that you you need to use other people's money? Well, that is a true fact. You should not be using all of your money to start your business, to grow your business. If you are using your money, your capital, then you are doing something wrong. The money that you make should be sitting in your bank account, and then you should have a business account. And I'm going to get into all that very briefly. So understand that your business has to be deeper than money. Number five, are you willing to provide an experience and great customer service? Customer service, I have to say, sucks in today's world. Don't nobody want to be at work. You go to the registers. Don't nobody smile. Don't nobody speak. Well, if you want to be different than any other business, I'm going to tell you right now from a, a person that has management experience for over 12 years. I did retail uh, for over 12 years. I managed my store Strive. I managed my stores. Was, um, profit was over $1.5 million a year. Even though I hated retail, I can honestly say that I learned some things in retail that I apply today in our business, whether I'm doing leasing or whether I'm doing our tours or anything like that or our television show. So if you want to be different than anybody else, provide great customer service and provide people with an experience. I guarantee you that your business will strive, it will thrive, and you will be successful, and that will set you apart from everybody else's business that's out there. So make sure before you start your business that you are well prepared. And then you have to have a business plan. You have to have goals. You have to have a, a goal. You got to have a five-year goal, 10-year goals. Most people are happy just to say they have a business and they have an EIN number. Well, your business has to be more than just a, a, a name or an EIN number. You got to look deeper. Where you want to be five years from now? Where you want to be 10 years from now? 15 years from now? And you need to be looking for as retirement because someday we're all going to get old and we're going to be at 75, 85 years old and we're not going to be able to run that business. Are our kids going to run that business? Are our kids, kids going to run that business? So you must have a business plan and you must have a goal and you should be having, and you should attain it. You should have a goal to attain your goal. You should have a plan, I'm sorry, to attain your goals in a certain amount of time and time frame. Don't just be happy to have a business and have an EIN number. Have a thriving business. Have a business that's going to be successful, that's going to make it, that's going to last throughout the years. All right, so we're going to look at the 16 steps process to succeed. First of all, you need a business name. You need to have your business name, maybe something catchy, maybe something different. But first of all, you want to make sure that you have a business name. For ours, our business is actually, even though we go into contemporary living with Farming Hill, um, and we like contemporary living because the stuff we talk about is relatable, and contemporary means relatable. But our business name, if you look us up, is Farm and Hill Enterprises. And the reason we have an enterprise because we do a lot of different stuff. We do tours. We have a television show. We do workshops. Uh, we do Airbnb. So all this stuff falls up under our enterprise. Okay? So one of the first things you want to do, you can get this for free. You can go do it right now after you watch this video. You want to go to www.irs.gov. And, you, and get your EIN number. Your EIN number is your personal identification number, kind of like your social security number, but it is your EIN number. And you're going to use this number. It's going to go, it's going to be with you throughout the ages, throughout time, unless you get another business under a different EIN number. number. But your EIN number is what you're going to use to build your business. And understand this, the country, you know, I, I think we always get caught up in politics and government and stuff like that as though, you know, a lot of people don't want us to, um, the government don't want us to thrive and stuff like that. The government, when you begin to understand taxes, you begin to understand business, the government rewards businesses. And guess what? Most of your politicians, your congressmen, your senators, they are business owners. So that's why most of the laws benefit business owners. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. But as a business owner, this is an advantage for you to grow your business, but you have to do it properly as we move on. So understand that the EIN number, which is your employee identification number, is absolutely free. It takes nothing but a couple of minutes to get an EIN number as we move on. Next, I'm in Chicago, 
And if you're in Chicago or anywhere, I honestly, you're going to need what they call the Articles of Incorporation through your Secretary of State. By me being in the great state of Illinois, our Secretary of State is Jesse White, which is a good man. We've been met him a couple of times, former military. He's been in office for years. Um, he does great things. But long story short, you want to have your order, Articles of Incorporation. You need to decide, if you, are you going to be uh, LLC? Are you going to be? A, are you going to have a um, partnership? Are you going to have a sole proprietorship? Anything like that. So you want to set up your um, corporation. So if you're in Illinois, you go to CyberDriveIllinois.com um, to set up your corporation. It's $175. Um, actually, a few years ago, it was higher than that. Um, I think it was close to four to $500. So they lowered the price so people can get out and start a business. So you need an article. You need your articles of incorporation and decide how you want to build your business. Okay. As we move on. And this is what I don't hear. You know, I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I hear a lot of people talk. You have to have a local business license. Our local business license in our community is fifty dollars. So I don't know what it is in your communities, but you want to go down to your um, city hall, find out what it is to have a business license in your community because you need a business license to operate in your area. So and and when you go, I believe when we signed up for our business credit through Amazon, it was Amazon. Yeah, it was Amazon. Amazon actually wanted a copy of our business license. So they did just didn't want our EIN number. They wanted copies of our business license as well. So you need to get your business license. Um, you normally got to renew every year. Like I said, ours is fifty dollars in our community. Um, actually, it's about time for us to renew November, December. You know, that's when you normally want to renew. So by the time you go into twenty twenty, you're all prepared. All right, next. Some people do this. Some people don't. Don't. I'm sorry. A virtual or real office address. You got to have an office address. I have friends. They got the virtual offices over in other states. Um, they do it because of tax write-offs. I really haven't studied the benefits of it, but I know a lot of people, they have their business set up in other areas far as the virtual office, far as for tax write-off and tax write-offs and, and benefits. You can go to Regus.com. Uh, if you're looking to have a virtual office set up, just to let you know. So you, if you want a virtual virtual office, that's fine. You can go there. Or if you have a physical address in a community that you're in, whether it's in your home or you got a business location, you definitely want to have an office address. And let me say this here about your business. That stuff has to be accurate when you're applying for business loans, when you're applying for net 30s. Um, and I'm going to get into the, all that shortly. But that stuff has to be accurate when you put it in in the system because artificial intelligence is going to capture your information. And if your information is incorrect, guess what? You're going to be denied. For instance, your, your articles of incorporation may, be, may say A, B, C, I, N, C. But when you go apply for your loan or your line of credit, you may put just ABC with your EIN number. Guess what? You're going to be rejected because your information was not 100% accurate. So remember, everything you do has to be 100% accurate when it comes to building your business. As we move on, you need a business phone number. Mine here, 773-9311. I just throw that off the Prince song, one of my favorite songs of Prince, Rest is Soul. But if you you can go to um, voice.google.com. Once again, that's voice.google.com to get you a free business phone number. Um, a lot of places they recommend that you have an 800 number. They say 800 numbers, um, they look more professional. Uh, you want to make sure that you have an email address as well. Um, I, heard, I hear that a lot of times you don't want to use Yahoo or gmail.com. You want to have your own type of business email address. Me personally, we haven't had a problem with our Gmail email address, but I just figured I'd throw that out there as well. But long story short, you can use grasshopper.com if you need an 800 number. I think there may be a fee associated with that. That I don't know because we use the voice.google.com, and that is free, just to let you know. Another thing, you need to open up a business account. Once again, you must open up a business account. You cannot co-mingle your funds. Meaning that you can't have a business account and trying to co have your, you got a personal account. Let me just say it like this. Break it down. I guess this will make it easier. You need your business account. You need to have a personal account. You don't want to be taking care of your personal business through your business account. Because guess what? If any, any liability comes through, you're going to be responsible for it. 
and then that's, you're going to get people fueled to go after your personal assets. And that's the reason you got to have your personal assets divided from your business assets because in the midst of all this, if you have a lawsuit, you don't want nobody to come taking your personal assets and then you're gonna be found having nothing. So make sure that you have a business account and you keep your business account separate from your personal account. Any transaction with your business should be strictly business. Any transaction with your personal bank account should be personal. So remember that. And also you wanna make sure that you have some type of business insurance to protect yourself from any liabilities or anything that may come your way. All right, so make sure, number seven, that you have a business account. You can take about $100, go open up your business account at Wells Fargo, City Bank, US Bank, somewhere, but make sure that you have a business account. Number eight, you wanna list your business. This is very important because a lot of people, a lot of companies look at this to make sure that your business is listed before they approve you for anything in a national database. So what you want to do, you want to go to listyourself.net. It's free. I know I watched a couple of YouTube videos. They said you had to pay, but we signed up for it. It was free. I think if you get, um, if you want them to market for you, if you want them to advertise your particular business or your phone number, you have to pay. But we didn't pay anything. Um, so that's a good thing. So you want to go to list yourself so you can be in the papers, um, the 411. So a lot of businesses, they look at this here. Website, make sure you have a website. I don't care if it's a low, if it's a landing page, you need a website because guess what? A lot of these business want to know if you have a website, if you have a fax number and things like that. They're going to make sure that you are a legit business. So you want to make sure that you have all this stuff in place. So listyourself.net, you can go register your business. Um, it, it's unique because you get a chance to see all the businesses in the area. So go go to the site, play around with it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. A website as well, and if you got a fax number, you definitely want to have a fax number. Your next is Dunn and Bradstreet number. Some of the businesses you um, you go to or you sign up for uh, business accounts, they're going to see if you have a Dunn's and Bradstreet number. You can go to dnb.com to sign up for this here. It's free of charge, just like your EIN number. And this is a number that a lot of companies use. They look at your Dunn's and Bradstreet number just to check your credit report, your business credit, to make sure that you're paying your bills on time. So just remember that there. Now, when you sign up for Dunn's and Brad, Bradstreet, listen to me. You're going to get some calls of representatives for Duns and Bradstreet. They're going to try to upsell you. They're going to want you to, they're going to tell you, you got to pay for your, um, your Duns and Bradstreet number, which is not true. Um, just to let you know, but they're going to tell you that because they're trying to get some sales and they're going to tell you how they're going to promote you and a whole bunch of great stuff. But you don't have to pay that, what, $350? I think it's probably more than that. So just remember that. So you, you can go get a Duns and Bradstreet number today. You need to have one of those to set up your business as well. All right. And that, like I said, it is absolutely free of charge. The next one is what they call eCredible. So eCredible is, is pretty much what you're going to use to start building your business credit. So you can go to eCredible.com. You're going to start building your business credit this way. So if you have a mortgage, number one. Number two, if you pay a light bill. Number three, if you pay a gas bill at your residence. Number four, if you pay for water. Number five, if you pay for a cell phone. Most of us, I believe 90% of the country has cell phones, if not more. If you have Sprint, T-Mobile, Verizon, um, I can't think of the other ones right now, but if, if you get the drift. If you have any of these cell phone providers, you need to use these to build your credit. If you have if you have internet or cable, if you if you have an automobile and you're paying payments on your automobile, if you're paying car insurance, house insurance, you need to connect all this here to your eCredible. Let me back up. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. And what you want to do, you want to connect all these to your eCredible.com account. And what they're going to do, every time you pay your bills, it's going to report to your business credit. It's going to report to the Experian, Credit Safe, um, and Sonya. Now, let me let you understand this here. Your personal credit, you have Equifax. This, uh, you have Equifax, I'm sorry, Experian, and you have TransUnion. That's your personal. Now, on the, in the business world, you have credit as well. 
you have your Experian business, you have your Equifax business, you have Credit um, Credit Safe, and some other ones I'm gonna go with, over with you very shortly. But you wanna connect these bills, or if you have anything thing else, I think you can do a total of maybe eight or twelve. You wanna connect them to Ecredible. Now, Ecredible, like I said, when you every time you pay your bill each month, it's gonna report on your business side far as your credits for your business credit you are already paying these bills is just going to report to eCredible now if you want eCredible to go back two years of all your bill payments I think they charge you twenty dollars per account if you want them to backtrack for two years far as the bills you, that you have paid over the last two years so this is the perfect way to start building your credit at www.ecredible.com alright and this one I was just talking about I didn't want to get ahead of myself so you have four major business credit scores and you have the Duns and Bradstreet, which you didn't heard me talk about today. You got the Experian business. You got the Equifax business. You have the uh, FICO, and you have the Small Business Finance Exchange. Now, you see up top, you see the numbers are 0 through 100. That is how um, they base your score. If you're paying everything on time, as you see, um, you're going to be you want to be at 76 or above. That's in good standings. That means that you're paying your bills on time the great thing about business credit that unlike your personal credit you can apply for credit from this place and that place and it will not hurt your business score now on a, and your, if you're using your personal credit now you know if you apply for houses or you apply for cars you're gonna get what they call a hard inquiry and you don't want hard inquiries on your credit your personal credit score because it brings your credit score now well with the business credit you don't have to worry about that. You can apply for as many loans if you want using your EIN number or your Duns and Bradstreet, and guess what? Your credit score will not be affected. So that's a good thing about having business credit as you build as you start building your business. Okay. Now we're going to get to the fun part: net 30 companies. So what is a net 30? So net 30 is pretty much as you look at the right, bottom right, it says no upfront money needed. You pay 30 days from the ship date. Let me get some water here. All right. So the net 30, you pay 30 days from the ship date. And I'm going to show you some net 30 companies that's out there that you can sign up for. And the good thing about the net 30 is you don't use your personal security number, social security number, I'm sorry, but you use your EIN number. So some of the places out there, you have Uline. Now, Uline, they report to Duns and Bradstreet, just to let you know. They have shipping supplies. So when you sign up for Uline, um, you want to spend a minimum of $50 per, per company, just to let you know. And this helps build your business credit when they're reporting. Also, you have Quill. Quill is also, I love Quill. They always send us stuff in the mail. they always emailing us. I'm telling you, Quill will have you spending all your money. I like Quill, and like I said, once you sign up for these companies using your EIN number, you buy the, the stuff up front, they'll ship it to you, and you have 30 days to pay it in full. That's why it's called Net 30, but we love Quill. Um, Quill has been good to us. The National Pen, they report to the, uh, Dunn and Bradstreet. I like National Pen because everything you do with them has to be customized. You can order ink pens from them. You can order mugs and cups and and put your logo on there so national pins as well is a good place if you're looking for um, net 30s I'm also going to put some net 30s under the description some other ones that I don't talk about on this particular video but I'll put some at the bottom of the link so you can take a look at them as well also monopolize your marketplace we signed up for that um, they report to everybody they, they report to um, Experian, that's what they report to. We signed up for them. Um, they take out $59.99 a month for four months. Um, they they report to not only oh not only do they report to Experian, they report to like 20 other different credit bureaus as well. So that's a good thing with them. It's pretty much software. If you want to learn how to grow your business, if you want to learn how to market your business, um, monopolize your marketplace has a lot of software, and that's what you're going to be getting with them. Um, you have Granger here. Granger they report to Duns and Bradstreet. Now, um, Granger deal they pretty much deal with hardware. They deal with power tools, pumps, and things like that. So, also Granger is a good place um, for you as well. 
Next, we're going to go into what they call revolving lines of credit. So revolving lines of credit pretty much means this. Revolving, um, you pretty much always have lines of credit to these companies. As long as you're paying on them, it starts over. So they give you $500, you spend $500, you pay your $500, your revolving credit starts again. So Dell Computer, they do revolving credit. Office Depot, they do revolving credit. Lowe's, they do revolving credit as well. Staples, and also one of our favorites, BP. I'm going to do a special one on BP um, because I think BP is by far probably one of the best revolving lines of credit out there because guess what? You're going to always need gas. And um, it's ironic, we're on the revolving lines of credit step already. Um, we, 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 we did the net 30, now we're on revolving lines of credit. BP, I like them uh, because, like I said, you're gonna always need gas. You can save a little bit, a little bit of money at the pump. And guess what? If you don't qualify for BP right off hand, they have where you can pay two hundred dollars um, to get your net thirty. But with that two hundred dollars, they're gonna give you like six a six hundred dollar line of credit. And if you pay um, your bill on time each month what they're going to do is after a year refund you your two hundred dollars back so that's the good thing about the BP one um, and I'm going to have a special video like I said for BP because uh, so I can get into in depth with the BP um, revolving lines of credit but I really think that's a good one I heard a lot of people on um, YouTube talk about the BP but the thing about it they talked about it <laughs> but they was inaccurate with a lot of stuff so but I have a connection for you for BP, somebody you can actually call, email, if you want to get the BP line of credit, okay? Next, so once you done did the net 30, once you done did the uh, the revolver lines of credit, you should have been moved up now to your personal business credit. So the personal, your personal business, not your personal business credit, your business credit, excuse me. So the business credit consists of your American Express cards, your Master cards, your Visa cards. So you want to get to that status. After six to twelve months, if you have ten accounts reporting, we're going to say that you got all net five. We're going to say that you got all five of the net thirty accounts reporting, and then we're going to say that we just looked at the five revolving credits. Okay, so that's ten revolving credits. So within six to twelve months, you should have over fifty thousand dollars worth of business credit. If that makes sense. So your, your business should be worth about $50,000 about time you get to 6 to 12 months because guess what? You're building credit. You're building those accounts with those vendors that we just looked at. So by the time you get to your business credit, your American Expresses, your Visas, MasterCard, you should have been established something by now to make the bank say, okay, I'm, give you, I'm going to give you a MasterCard. I'm going to give you a Visa. I'm going to give you an American Express because you paid faithfully on the other 10 accounts that you have and I'm just back up to those 10 accounts I was talking about these are the 10 accounts that I was talking about these are your net 30s from your net 30s you, you advanced on you removed to your revolving lines of credit and then from there you went into your business portfolio your business credit so within one to two years hopefully that your business is worth anything from a hundred thousand dollars to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and guess what if you have done it right and if you have got with organizations, which I'm going to uh, probably t hit, talk about a little bit at the end, there are companies out there that can help you get that business line of credit where you don't have to come out your own pockets. And with your business line of credit, you want to buy stuff of value. You want to buy, buy assets. If you need to buy stuff for your salon, if you need to buy stuff for your event planning business, if you want to buy stuff for your building, you should be using your business credit. And then guess what? When those customers you have pay for their service, they're paying off your credit that you owe because you're providing great service, you're providing great customer service, and each time they pay you, guess what? You're paying back the loans that you have taken out for as far as your business, and you're not going into your personal stash. So that's how you want to pretty much build your business credit. Your business credit, you want to be using not your money, but the bank money. You want to use the bank credit cards, the Visa, the MasterCards, and the, and the American Express cards. And you want to hold on to your own personal finances, but make sure that you buy stuff of that, that that benefits your business, that's an asset to you, and you just ain't out there buying gym shoes and clothes and and stuff that's not going to bring value to your business. All right, so 
and I know I was ahead of my time, well, ahead of my slide, and unsecured business lines of credit. Hopefully, that you grow your business when you have that. And then, in the process of all this, make sure that you do not forget your personal line of credit. Do not ne neglect your personal line of credit. Because in the beginning, you may have to use some of your personal finances, maybe to help get your business started. So what I probably would do, me personally, I probably would write my business a check and and give it to my business and put it write the check in my business name and get my business a loan and then once the business begin to thrive have the business pay your per, pay you back personally the personal loan that you gave them have your business pay you back that way so like I said because you don't want to co-mingle your funds all right so once all that is said and done once you done did your um net 30 once you done did your revolving lines of credit, once you have your personal business credit up and running, you can always go to nav.com. So what nav.com is, it's a, it reports your business credit. As you can see here on the screen, you got your personal score, which is your experience and transunion. And then if you look to the right, it has your business score. So nav.com, and the, I, one thing I like about nav.com, they let you know what business credits or business credit cards that you could um, apply for that you'll get approved for so navigate through nav.com it's a it's a real cool site um, it's good for your business it'll let you know if your business will qualif qualify for any personal lines of credit or business line of credits it'll also let you know what your business credit score is and it let you know what your personal credit score now I must tell you with your business credit score it's open for anybody to see so if you tell me, Andre, I got abcinc.com, we thrive, and guess what? I can go to nav.com, pull up your business. It is personal. It is, it is, um, it's not private information, but it's open for anybody to see. It's public information. Unlike your personal, your personal stuff is private. Can't nobody see that. But your business score, anybody can see. Anybody can sign in on, on nav.com and see how your business is doing. And see if it's growing, see if it's doing good, bad, or what have you. And as I get ready to close out, here's a nice little bonus for you guys. Get funding for your businesses. So there's a lot of places you can go to get funding for your business. As you see here on the list, you got revenue lending, you got merchant, merchant cash advance, you got account receivable financing, purchase order financing, startup unsecured business financing. Book of business financing, 401k financing, securities financing, commercial vehicle financing. You have commercial real estate financing, peer-to-peer -peer lending. You have angel investing. You got venture capital. You have private investment, equity investment, inventory financing, equipment financing, equip, sell, lease back, and you have SB loans. See, these are all the different fundings that's out there for businesses. And at the bottom right, if you want to start building your personal credit, there's a site you go to called optoutprescreen.com. And let me tell you about the beauty of this here. So I just learned, out, learned about this, and I, I signed up for it. I was watching uh, Financial Trade Lines on YouTube, one of our favorite shows. We like to watch Financial Trade Line. We like to watch Credit Suite. We like to watch Airbnb Automated. And another one we like is Our Rich Journey. Those are the four shows that we watch on YouTube. They give you a lot of great information. But opt in and opt out. If you're trying to build your personal credit, you go to this site. And what you do, you sign up and say you want to opt in. Well, when you opt in, you're going to start getting, I'm going to let you know now, you're going to get a whole bunch of um, mail sent to your house of pre-approved credit cards. There's a gentleman on trade on trade lines if you if you go to um what's that um I think it's um, what I can't even think of it right now it's trade line TV but if you go to trade line TV there's a gentleman they talk about on this site that is worth over two hundred thousand dollars well the way he did it was he did the opt in and opt out so when you sign up for opt in and opt out what they're going to do is going to pre qualify you for credit cards and you're going to get a whole bunch of you're going to get a lot of mail saying that, look, Tony, Angela, you've been pre-approved for this credit card. So 99.9%, .9 they're not going to be running your credit because guess what? They already know your credit score. They done already ran everything. They done already looked at your credit, and they don't have to run it. 
So they're going to tell you that you're pre-approved for all these credit cards. What these credit cards do is open up your lines of credit. Okay? And so, but you got to be careful because some of them have high annual fees. I just threw a few of them away because I'm not paying $85, $100 for a credit card each year. But some of them, they have no annual fees. Those are the ones you want to look at. And the revolving credit, you want to use those to build your business. You want to use those to build your personal finances. Okay? Understand this about credit cards before I close out. We always hear the myth about credit cards are bad. Credit cards are not bad. It's how you use them. You want to always use, keep your utilization at 30%. Let me say it again. You always want to keep your utilization at 30, below 30%. So, for instance, if you have a credit card that's worth $300, you shouldn't be spending no more than $90 of that $300. That's, that's 30% of $300, which is $90. So, make sure that you keep your utilization under 30% so it won't affect your credit score. And as long as you keep that utilization up under 30%, heck, heck, if possible, keep it at 7%. If you keep that utiliz utilization at at least 7%, Guess what? It's going to continue to increase your credit score. And you want to pay off your credit card before the closing date. Not the due date. You need to call your credit card companies and say, look, when is my Capital One, when is my Capital One closing date? That's when you want to pay off your credit card before the closing date, not the actual due date. That helps boost your credit as well. So I hope this was beneficial to you. I hope you learned something. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook at Contemporary Living with Farming Hill. We always try to make sure that we give you some knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So once again, thank you for tuning in to Contemporary Living with Farming Hill. And as always, excuse me, get some water here as I get ready to close out. All right. So as always, we thank God for his unmerited, undeserving favor called grace. For grace is the total absence of any works. You can't work for grace. You can't buy it. You can't tear it for it. It is simply what God has given to each and every one of us. Because we believe that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day for our justification. On behalf of myself and my wife, Melissa, and contemporary living, be blessed. Have a good night.